Hey everyone, it's Finola Howard and this is Ask Finola How and this is episode 53 and today we've got a heavy duty question today so I may end up talking for a little bit longer than I normally do but it's an important one and it's and, and possibly because I've been speaking so much about positioning lately with the um, webinar, our last one tomorrow evening but the question is this, okay? The question is, I keep hearing about positioning, strategic positioning, business, brand, marketing positioning, and so on, but I'm really not sure what it means for me and my business. Can you please explain? And actually, you know, we actually don't talk enough about positioning and it's the most important thing, an active choice that you'll make in your business. And positioning just in its simplest format, right? It's actually a process, but positioning when you arrive at it is, what is the space? What is the space in your customer's mind that you own? And the act of positioning is about acquiring space in your customer's mind. And, you know, it's trying to be top of mind, being the first person they think of that can have the answer to this problem. It's always about being top of mind. It's about being uniquely positioned so that, and you'll hear me say this a lot, own a space. And what I mean by owning a space is owning that top of mind, that share of mind that you know that if I have a problem like this, this is the person I speak to. So positioning helps you do that. You're kind of weaving all the strands in that whole marketing ecosystem to allow you to create this kind of declaration of this is how I can help. It's a part, of, it's like what brand does, but we do it more consciously and we do it from many, many different angles, okay? So just think of it like that. Positioning is about owning a space and the best marketing strategy you have is to own a space that takes you to where you want to go, okay? And so if you are in, you are a coach, and you specialize in, you have to have a specialism. That's the whole point. When I even start speaking about it, it's about framing it so it's easy to buy from you. That's positioning. And you make sure that you pick the right customer, you have the right, you, with the right problem for you to solve, that you can do better than anybody else, and that you provide that in a kind of a packaged way in, and how you package it to actually make it really kind of click for them to buy from you, you price it right, you message it right, your branding has to be right. It so it takes you, and this is something that I say actually in the webinar, and it's it means that it stops you whispering about what you do and starts you declaring what you do. That's positioning. That's owning that space. Okay. Because this is Ask for Know How, I'm gonna give you it's kind of a heavy area, so I wanna give you a little bit more than just telling you what it is. Because what we're trying to do is when we go through this act of positioning, it's not you really move away from kind of going, I'll do that, you know, finger in the air and just go, oh, that kind of looks interesting. It's not. You're actually going to calculate it. You're going to look at it from all the different angles that you need to. And you start inwardly looking. You start looking about you start looking at what's my zone of genius? Where am I? Where do I do my best work? What are the best products that I create, that I build, that I do, that my customers love? So what is that space that where I am my best? So it's this inward journey first, right? So you start going, what, what is my zone of genius? What do I build best, create best? How do I serve best? And then you say, okay, I kind of know that now. And it's not an end point because that kind of knowledge of what you're best at will, will adapt based on what we see in the marketplace. So you start inwardly and you look at what is my zone of genius? And then you go outside and you say, but what does the market need? And where do those two things connect? My ability to do X and their need for Y. How do I bring me and my zone of genius in line with enough customers that really need that answer. So you're inward and outward looking. So you start inward going, this is what I'm great at. And then you go to, and I think I can help these people. 
So you go and look at those people and you say, what do they need? And what's their problem that I think my product can solve? And you go, okay, there's enough people out there that have this problem, but let's see. So, okay, I can bring the two of those things together. And you can see like, you know, when you did maths in school and you had the two circles overlapping, you go, oh my God, there's this beautiful overlap where I'm amazing at this and they really need this. The other thing you need to bring into that mix then is because we have to look at it from all the angles. So you make progress by doing that. The next thing you do is you look to the side. So you can look at me and you look at you. And then you look at the side and you look at them, which is your competitors in this space. Or the people who have an alternative solution, not quite like yours, that also answer the problem. They may not answer it in the same way. They They have their own unique perspective on it that sings maybe not directly to your customer, but maybe enough to them. So you go, well, what do they do better than me? Are they, is there something that they know that I haven't quite thought of yet? Can I adopt or actually take what they've done, tweak it and add that to what I do to make me even better at what I do? And then I've got a better chance with this customer. And then we go and we look at the other side of the puzzle and we say, well, what are the trends happening out there? What are the trends in the marketplace? Where are things going? I mean, lots of trends happening at the moment because so much change, especially in energy, medical devices, look at what's happening with electricity, solar, all that kind of stuff. So you go, what are the trends in my industry that I should be aware of to future-proof myself? Let me look at that. And then you go, mm, okay, I've got the right answer now. I've really heard the voice of my customer and what they need. And I really know what I'm really great at. And I know what they're really great at. And I'm going to just tweak that a little bit. And then I'm going to future-proof it. So then you come with this this really good answer, okay? But having the right answer is not enough. So you package that answer, which is your product or service. And you go, okay, let me get all the ducks in a row here. And let me just kind of see how that comes together. And what's that look like? And I go, okay, now how am I pricing that? Because... Price also says something about what I do. And, you know, the people over here can't really afford that, but maybe they can do a payment plan. Or the people over here, no, this is where I'm going to do it. I need it to be at this price. Who cares? I don't care what this price is. I care about is that price aligned with everything else you've discovered? Does it position you more powerfully in the minds of the customer that this is the answer for my problem because, and the answer that all lies in, where are you in relation to competitors? Does it tick all the boxes and all that kind of stuff? So we have this beautiful product that we've created that answers a need in the marketplace. We've priced it really well. We know we're really different. The next important piece of that puzzle, I always think of this quote and you've heard me say it before, You can say the right thing about a product and nobody will listen. You've got to say it in a way that they feel it in their gut or nothing will happen. That's by a guy called Bill Bernbach. And this is the other part of your positioning. It's not enough to get the offer right, to get the answer right. It's, it's, is it more important? Yeah, it is more important to get the messaging right that you get to communicate all of that in a way they feel it in their gut. They don't feel it in their gut, nothing will happen. This is why we do things like brand and how we use color to communicate, how we use font to communicate, how we use language to communicate, how we use video to communicate, how we use all of these things to actually reach the minds and hearts of our customers and guts of our customers in a really clear, intact, not noisy, a clear, intact message that goes straight to the heart of the matter. So you're not just owning top of mind, you're owning mind, heart, gut, everything. It's about building that deep connection with the customer that shows them that you are the right person here. So it's not just about you know, getting all the technical stuff around the product and how you price it and package it and all of that and and make sure it's distributed well in the marketplace, make sure you're in the right place on the right platform or in the right shelf on the right aisle or whatever it is. It's also about 
what makes them reach their hands out to grab what you have. And they reach their hands out because you're top of mind, because you own the space. That's positioning. It's about taking everything and lining it up end to end so that it becomes a declaration and not a whisper in the marketplace. And if you would like to know more about this, I really invite you <laughs> to the webinar tomorrow night, which is Thursday the 8th of September at 8 p.m. And the link is in the bio if you want to register and it's free. If you'd like to know more, because I'm gonna show you how to use purpose to weave through all of that positioning piece to make what you do a declaration in the marketplace and not a whisper. Hope you enjoyed. Have a great day. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.